What is going on, beautiful people? It's your boy Hill Wesley from A Connection TV here on YouTube, the one place in the World Wide Web where we actually adapt similar connections despite our differences. And welcome to my channel. If this is your first time seeing me, definitely follow me on all Twitter, social medias, all social medias, Twitter and Instagram, uh, at West the Good Guy. And uh, yeah, I am here to talk to y'all about Only One Gets the Crown. We already know who the winner was. We knew who the winner was going to be. I mentioned it in one of my videos before. Y'all didn't want to believe me, but I had unfortunately read a spoiler situation. And so it allowed me to know who was going to win this season. And based on watching it, you kind of could tell, or I kind of could tell that it was going to be him. Uh, but it is what it is. Let's talk about this, right? First of all, let's start off with the season. The season was a sleeper. The season did not get good until the whole controversial aspect of um, Horacio, Baby Daddy Kylan uh, being the scapegoats for this massive alliance to make it to the end, right? That's when the show got interesting. And what I mean by that is because I had someone to root for, right? In the beginning, I was rooting for Corey, but then Corey like fell off and starting to like target was targeting big t and melissa and i didn't really understood that right then you had the whole Corey and melissa have a near like thing going on and i was mad because that's my man <laughs> and i don't need to see melissa fondling him and stuff that was a bit much but then melissa was screaming at all of the black women or the women of color right and that just aggravated my mind because in both instances where Melissa was yelling at everyone, everyone was comforting Melissa and no one was comforting um, Narice and no one was comforting, uh, damn it, what is her name? Raven. And so I was like so annoyed by that, right? And so frustrated. Then you have Jay yelling at everyone, talking at everyone like he's above them and like he's King Kong and his bitch. Then you have Michelle manipulating everything and like, oh no, well, oh well, I have your back. You should have my back. It just was a lot happening and nothing was hot about any of the stuff that was going down. And I was getting to feel like I needed to root for someone. Some like, why am I watching this show? And the answer became, Kylan and Horacio. That is why I was watching the show. I, they kept getting thrown in, thrown in, and I wanted them to win, to win, and knock somebody off their ass. That's why I kept watching the show. But that didn't happen. You know, that didn't happen. And then after, you know, they took out Zaza, they took out Raven, then then there's Horacio, then there's Kylan. It's like, who's left? Norris. Norris becomes a queen to watch. And Norris becomes interesting. Norris becomes a hero when she realizes that Jay and Michelle are the villains and she decides to not play Jay's game and she wants to start playing her own game to save her friend and her boo. Then it's like, okay, now I can root for Norris, right? But then they keep getting thrown in. They keep getting thrown in. They keep getting thrown in. Norris ends up taking out Colin and Horacio and it's like, I can watch for Norris. And so I'm watching and I'm watching and they're treating her like crap. And every time she comes back, she's speaking her ish. She's talking her ish, you know? And I'm like, come on, Norris, you got this. You could do this. You could do this. But then we get to the challenge and like Norris is like trailing behind and Emmanuel is trailing in front. And I'm just like, oh, Jesus, I don't really want to watch this, but I want to see where Norris places at least. Right. Then we get the situation where Corey out of nowhere decides to be a great guy. Right. And then he goes ahead and challenges Jay to the duel and he beats Jay. We we get rid of Michelle and we get rid of Jay. And I'm like, OK, Corey, now I can root for you. I can root for Corey and I can root for Norese. F. Burner, F. Colleen, F. Enamel. Don't nobody want to see none of them win. All right? But I'm still kind of edging for Norris. She's been in elimination multiple times. I'm like, they got to they gotta reenact this particular challenge, this elimination thing somewhere in this final, right? In my mind. You know, all throughout this situation, and I don't even know, should I even go over my notes? I'll go over my notes. I'll go over my notes because <laughs> there's not really much to talk about. Enamel won, and no one cares. I don't. And I'm going to read over the Twitter uh, sphere and see what's going on over Twitter. But um, Narice is called to the carpet by Enamel. 
Because email can't, email is a bitch. He is. He's a punk. He's a bitch. He's a punk. He's, he's a sucker. Okay. And he calls out Norris. Norris starts to cry a little bit. She pulls the mace. The mace is Mariah. Norris beats Mariah. I'm happy about this. I'm happy about this. And Mariah takes it to the chin. She's a great sport. She's out of here. I'm happy about this. Then there's checkpoint after checkpoint. We get to a checkpoint where, you know, they have to, they can't go to sleep, but the first person to take the tiles out can pick the item that they want to utilize to be on the beach with. And Norris beats these four people, and I'm ecstatic. When Norris beats the four people, she then sabotages Emmanuel and sabotages Colleen. And in sabotaging Colleen, she's like, I don't like you. I tried to stick up for you, but you threw me under the bus, so forth and so on. I'm cool that she's sabotaging Colleen, but she should have threw all her pieces in Emmanuel's thing, period. You know what I'm saying? We see this long dissertation that she's given to Colleen. You mean to tell me she was like, oh, I'm just going to put some in yours email and that's it. That's all she said to, to email. But to Colleen, she got all this breath. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm like, did the editors like take it out or did she really have all that to say to Colleen? Which is fine. She could say whatever she wants to say to Colleen. But the main villain here is a email. Throw all your stuff into email's pot. That's what I'm feeling. Right? But well, whatever. Email ends up getting second place, even though she was sabotaged. Then right after, it's freaking, uh, is it Colleen? No, Colleen was last. After is Corey, then um, Berna, and then Colleen was last. But she still finished. It is what it is, child. I, I was like, whatever. I, I was like, it, it is what it is. I... <laughs> Then we get Nori sharing the blanket that she won with Emmanuel. And in my mind, I'm like, why? I don't understand. Like, what are, what are we missing? This is, what, this is what I hate about these kind of shows because they show us that these people don't like each other. Then they show us that they're hugging and, and loving on each other. She j he, email just threw her into elimination. Why is Nori sharing her blanket? Because she's a nice person and it was freezing and she wanted to be nicer. What? Like, that's confusing to me. It's confusing to me. I can understand that. I can understand that. I know I'm not the only one. Then we get this, this scene from Diana Nyad. You know, the person, the old woman that swam from Cuba to freaking Florida. They got to drive. They got to swim 2,000 meters across to the situation to get up on the land and run and do some running. Child, uh, Bern is freaking out. I can't drink the drink. I can't drink the drink. Give me something else, TJ. Give me something else. Let me fight a shark in the ocean. I don't want to drink this drink. I'm like, girl, what? Why is she at the final? Then they get to this cliff. And Corey, like, oh, my God. It's so high. TJ is so high. I can't go down it. Oh, my God. What if I get stuck? Are you going to save me? What do I want? Oh, my God. I'm like, the thing is, y'all know that these finals, what these finals give, and why are y'all here and giving all this complaining and whining and it's complaining and whining? You know, but on the flip side, though, we did see Olivia just almost got her brain smashed out from winning the challenge. So the challenge ain't that safe. So, you know, these people do be getting hurt. I mean, Michelle broke ribs. I think Jay broke ribs this season. A lot of people broke ribs, got really injured. Some dangerous inju injuries be happening with these people. So... Then again, I could kind of reel it in backward and be like, I can understand why people would be crying because they could die. And I'm sure they signed waivers <laughs> saying, if you die, we ain't got to own on nobody. We ain't paying your family nothing. So y'all could die in this mug. So I can kind of understand why they be getting upset because that girl almost, she almost, her brain almost got smashed in by a golf ball. You know what I'm saying? And she had to get surgery. That's, anyways. Corey ends up going down. Emmanuel's up front. Who cares? You know, they get to this um, tenogram puzzle and Emmanuel beats that. Then Colleen beats it. Then uh, uh, freaking Norris beats it. You know, it's like, oh, Norris is behind again. Like, oh. Then we get to this water challenge. Norris starts crying. She's like, oh my God, I can't do the water. But she forced herself to go ahead and do it and she does it. Then her and Corey get the bright idea to work together. They work together. They get the thing and they on Emmanuel's tails. And I'm like, mm, come on, like, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. 
Both Norris ain't really much to talk about, but both Norris and Corey are on um, Emmanuel's tail, and they could possibly win it. They could possibly win it. But Norris gets she gets screwed up on the balance thing, and that's what caused her caused her to win. Emmanuel gets through all the puzzles and the challenges. He makes it to the end. Then, you know, Norris gets second. I was hoping that Corey would get third. He didn't. Colleen ends up getting third. Uh, Corey ends up getting fourth, which means he gets nothing. And then you have Burner at the end. Now, I want to read some of these uh, tweets that, uh, you know, people have, people have wrote on here. We're going to read these tweets. Yes, ma'am. Let's read these tweets. All right, so let's look at what's being said, okay? Let's 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 check these out. <laughs> let's check these out. I'm gonna turn this this way and go here with it, right? All right, none of them deserved it for real, but Narice. I don't care. They ain't have to fight for their lives down in elimination three times like her. Didn't have to send their two closest people in the game like her. The challenge thirty nine. Then we have. Bernard, you could have thrown Emmanuel into elimination and had an all-girls final, but you decided to stick with your alliance. Now you're leaving with nothing. True facts. We went from Chris on USA to who won multiple dailies and four eliminations, one of them against the Elimination King West, to Emmanuel, who barely made the edit and did whatever Jay and Michelle wanted. How? Facts. Facts. Chris's run on USA Season 2 was one to be inspired by and to admire because he did his damn thing. Bernard said they ain't have math in the circus school. Uh, don't get me wrong, Emmanuel won the final fairly, but Narisa deserved that title. She did more work and went down to the elimination three times. Emmanuel wouldn't have been in the finale if it weren't for Jay, period. Uh, I don't give a F about about to what official place you got. Norris is the champ, well-deserved queen. I just don't feel like Emmanuel earned it. He went under the radar the entire season. I'm not impressed. Just like Casey did in Big Brother and in the challenge. To be a champion, you have to be the champion, but not really. You can just skate your way to a final without seeing one elimination. Facts. Let me retweet this. We're going to retweet her. Norris is the female champ of the challenge, as far as I'm concerned. Period, Pooh. Having to listen to Colleen and another of her ridiculous speeches portraying herself as if she has this mastermind that's used everyone to benefit her game when it's just wet paper because she's done nothing. Okay. This season is a joke. Months of my life wasted. What the hell? I really do hope Emmanuel gets the Jenny treatment one and done because interesting. We're flying out on, okay. Thinking about how Jay was crying when Asaf was eliminated. A TJ had to think of something nice to say for everyone except Norris because they don't, they didn't do ish this season, but get carried to the finals, the challenge. Norris is the only one left TJ actually has respect for. Now, Corey, uh, least deserving champion. All the finalists but Norris making their way through the season on a route to the finale, period. Colleen, I had the target on my back all season. Me, did we watch the same show? Well, to be fair, Colleen didn't have a target on her back all season, but she did have a target on her back. She just was able to skate through it. Um, if Norris doesn't win this season, I'm never watching the challenge again. I will watch every season of the challenge as long as it's on. Right. Um, I need to read like this past Emmanuel right now. Facts. <laughs> this will always live rent free in my head. I love Naya. I miss her. Colleen, I'm sorry. What? You're delusional if you think Nari sabotaged you because she thinks you're a threat. Right. Mariah's game consisted of effing bananas preseason, effing James, effing over Nari's, and getting effed by Nari's. Wow. Yikes. Watching Jay get booted from the finale was such a glorious moment for me. I cackled so loudly. He did all that shady ish for nothing. Facts. And so we'll stop it there. We'll stop it there because I can keep reading this over and over again. But listen, guys, 
interesting season, but I feel like TJ needs to make a decision. And, and that decision needs to be how people that are constantly thrown in eliminations are rewarded afterwards. And I feel like we should go back to where we were in prior seasons. In order for you to make it to a final, you have to get through an elimination. And if you get through an elimination, you get a power. Or you can only, you can't, you can't do eliminations twice back to back. You can only do elimination once, then somebody else has to go. You know what I'm saying? Like, not unless you lose, but you can't be picked to be thrown in elimination all the time. I feel like, I feel like that should be a rule. You, you can't go twice in a row. You know what I'm saying? Consistently back to back to back. You have to go in one, miss one. Go in the third one, miss one. That gives more of an opportunity for people to like be able to fight for it. And I also feel like you should have to go through elimination to make it to the final. Because skating by like that is trash. And the way that Jay and Michelle played this game was trash. And the way that Emmanuel win the game was trash. It was just trash. It was just trash. He had nothing heroic to stand on. I don't know. I don't know. Corey, Corey had a come, Corey made a come, come around, which was great, but everyone else was trash. I love seeing Norris in the finale. I love seeing her making it through. Um, and she beat out everyone but Emmanuel. So I'm happy for her. What did y'all think about this? I think we need another season, but here's how I think the furthest, the, the next season should go. We should have a season of all champs. I think we should have a season of all champs. And then I think we should do another season of all people that haven't won, to be honest. This got pretty hot and tempting, to be honest. But I felt like the heroes needed to stand like stand strong. I feel like there should always be a situation where you can't continuously throw the same person in over and over again. They could do an elimination, then they miss one. Then they do an elimination, then they miss one. That's what I think should happen. Um, also... I think there needs to be a power if you win the elimination round. It should. Like, if you win elimination, you decide the groups for the next competition. If you win the elimination, you decide how whoever goes last. And you know what I'm saying? Who goes first? Who goes last? Like, there, there should be a, a thing with winning this. I don't know why they didn't do that. That is so crazy to me. But anyway, leave your comments below. Let me thought what you let me know what you thought about this. I reached out to Norris for an interview. I reached out to Corey. I reached out to Raven. Maybe I gotta text uh Corey. I mean Corey. Maybe I gotta text um uh, Kylan to make it happen. But I don't know. I, I hit these people up, they didn't respond, so it is what it is. And then I saw something where Norris was like, I'm not doing any more uh podcasts, I'm gonna just do my own video on my YouTube. I guess. Whatever. Anyways, if you know of any of these people and you follow them, definitely hit them up and tell them that I would love to do an interview. Because the reunion gets spicy. And hell, I just wait for Kylan to come around and we could talk about the reunion and everything else that I have questions for. Because he said he'd be down for that. But when he said, um, after, after, after whatever he was talking about, I, I saw, if, baby, and then Kylan said in that blue suit looking all sexy. Anyways, let me not amp up my baby that. <laughs> Leave your comments below. This was a cool season. I know y'all don't like the season, and I don't I don't appreciate and or give a damn about who won the season. I have the people that I loved on this show. Unfortunately, they got beat out and ransacked, but this birthed some great people because it birthed an amazing Norris. It birthed an amazing Kylan. Horacio was already amazing. It birthed a good-ass fucking Raven, and it birthed a Zaza. Like, we got some good people out of this season. I wish Chauncey would have did better. Anyways, leave your comments below. Deuces.